Hey yo, I'm Colby from Sanitarium Productions. We're back again with another action figure unboxing. In this episode, we're taking a look at the Warhammer 4000 series from McFarland Toys. This is the Adepta Sarita's Battle Sister. This is the first female figure we've got in the Warhammer line. Very cool looking. It does come in this nice window boxed package. <laughs> you get to see the cool sword. The cool bolter pistol here and the figure inside. Very cool looking. Uh, the top just has the McFarland Toys logo and the 12 and up. The bottom has the standard copyright information and the uh, barcode thing. The side has this cool extended artwork kind of close up of the Adepta Sarita's Battle Sister. And then the other side has that cool kind of mech crazy alien looking stuff <laughs> then on the back we do have the uh, close-up of the kind of glamour shot of the figure itself along with the other figures in the wave the blood angels hell blaster and the two artist proof versions of the two characters uh we've done the the hell blaster in previous episodes so go check that out if you haven't seen it already we're just gonna go ahead and dive into this one right here we do have a single piece of uh, tape plastic -y stuff here on the bottom here so we just go ahead and slice that off and get in here into the figure so the warhammer line has been very cool uh, it started out as the uh, actual uh, tabletop game feature so if you're interested go check that out it's a, a pretty cool little game system throw this to the side then we have the figure that is not taped in this time, so that's cool. We do have a battle stand here at the bottom here, so we'll go ahead and cut that out. And the easiest way is probably like this, just a kind of sticky knife under here and just kind of go around the edge more or less. Something like this. Make about a half a cut circle, and then you should be able to pull up on that. Well, I say that. There we go. And then just kind of rip it the rest of the way off, and then that slides out, and we've got this handy figure stand. Toss this to the side. The, the artwork on this thing is really cool, but uh, yeah, don't need that, so it goes to the side as well. Uh, let's see here. We do have a couple of uh, rubber bandy things holding things in place. So let's flip this over to the back and see what we have. I'm going to just try to grab one of these things and give it a little bit of a pull enough to get the blade in there and just slice that off. Same thing on this other side here. Lift and slice, and then looks like we've got something around the waist here. So same thing, lift and slice. All right, all that should now come out. So we got the cool chain sword here as an accessory. We got a cool new bolter pistol, very nice. And in the figure itself. There we go. And let's get some of this trash picked up and put in place. Throw that behind us here. And we get a first look at the figure here. I'm going to see if I need to... It looks like those uh, plastic pieces fell off, so we're good there. Uh, we'll go ahead and zoom in just a little bit here. Get a little closer. And let's look at the figure here. So starting off with the figure stand. Kind of a standard round base here with the Warhammer 4000 logo on it. One foot peg there. 
these things work pretty well. Uh, again, this is the first female figure we've got, so I don't know how well the the peg system is going to work, but looks about like normal here. I may have to adjust it a little bit, but figure stands very nicely, very easily. Looks pretty good there. So, I appreciate them including these little figure stands here. Always nice to have those stands. Uh, let's look at the chain sword first. This is pretty nice. It's got some decent details in it. The nice little uh, floor de leaf or whatever that is on the top here. Uh, some black paint on the bottom for the handle. And the rest is that metallic silver color here. So very cool. Uh, not a lot of details on it, but enough to make it pop just right. Very cool. Uh, so that can fit theoretically in either hand, left or right. So let's just go ahead and pop it in the right hand first. Uh, it is made out of the somewhat bendable plastic here, so shouldn't have to worry too much about it. So uh, fits in the hand a lot easier than the last figure we had there, so very cool. Uh, there's nothing on the back for it to plug into or anything, so... But it looks cool. Nice chainsaw sword. <laughs> very cool. Moving on to the bolter pistol. Again, we've got that nice kind of floor to leaf thing there. Um, most of it is all silver, but we do have a little bit of gold highlight here on the clip. Nice little spikes. Those may not actually be spikes, but some cool details anyways. Very cool. Um, they're modeled after the, the actual tabletop game version, so they're kind of clunky weapons. Big and chunky, so... They look really nice, though. I like that a lot. Fits in the hand pretty easily. Uh, we do have the trigger finger on this one here, so we just kind of try to slide this down and then push it over so that trigger finger kind of rests in place. You may have to adjust the finger a little bit to get it to go in there. There we are. But it looks pretty good there. These weapons are interchangeable with the other figures in the line, so that is pretty cool. I always like that. It's nice to have new arsenal to work with. Very cool. We'll move on to the actual uh, battle sister here. Again, this is the first female we get in the line, so it looks really nice. They've got a lot of detail in these things, which uh, is actually kind of surprising. Um, the regular Space Marine guys... Uh, they have some detail, but not a terrible amount, but this one, um, yeah, I'm actually pretty surprised with this, so let's get a little closer here. The helmet doesn't have a lot going on, a few rivets and things like that. Let me try to dial this down a little bit so we can see that a little better. Some little rivety things there on the helmet itself. Some very cool looking stuff going on though everywhere else. So we can see this crazy thing here on the chest piece. See all these little uh, rivets and um, what are those little buckler things. Lots of cool details all the way around here. Very cool. That kind of Florida leafy thing. And some kind of uh, winged thing. <laughs> Some cool details all the way around here with all these pouches, these grenade canisters. Lots and lots of cool details there. Again, lots of stuff going on with these pouches, little buttons, little folds in the fabric. You see the folds in the fabric on the shirt here, along with some, uh, I, I'm going to call those rivets as well, but very very nice and then the arm bucklers there you can kind of see the, like the chain mail kind of poking out through there more details in the armor pieces the gauntlets have little studs on them and everything then moving on down here with this uh, loincloth kind of thing there's texture on this which is what surprises me the most about this it's made out of a soft, bendy plastic here, but you can kind of see kind of the rough fabric in there. 
and that's very cool looking plus all this little design work here at the bottom uh, just a really amazing amount of detail there moving on down you can see some of these straps have little rivets and little spiky things and everything and then cool things down here on the actual um, knee guard then more details all the way down on the leg armor and then on the feet itself more bits and bobs and cool little details all the way around uh, the plastic has this weird kind of rubbery feel to it uh, which is different than the feel for the other figures we've had theirs has been kind of like just big chunky plastic this is again almost like a rubber feel it's kind of squishy and that's really cool i guess this particular piece seems to be an add-on so like down here at the bottom uh you can kind of press in on it it's kind of floppy and that real kind of squishy material and then same thing for some of this armor up here it's like an a, additional piece that they've added on the rest of the arms and everything feel very solid chest piece feels very solid but that's that's squishy material so that is actually pretty cool on the back here we do see we've got another cool kind of jet pack and it is removable it kind of works the same way as these other figures have it's got just this single little tabby bit here that attaches to the back piece here you just line those up and press in on it and it just snaps into place that's very cool let's take a look at this here again a lot of little detail bits here all the way around very very cool looking jet packy thing although I don't know if this is actually a jet pack or not uh, again my working knowledge of the Warhammer RPG line is a little limited but I don't know if this is supposed to be like the regular jetpack for the uh, Space Marines or not. Uh, those have like vent pieces on them. So I don't see vent pieces here. So this may just be like a rebreather or an oxygen tank or something. Whatever. It looks pretty awesome. I do like that the way that these things attach here. Again, you just line it up and just press it into place and it kind of just snaps in there. Very, very cool. Let's pop it back off for a second here and take a look at some more of the, the back sculpting here. Again, lots of little studs and things, little river bits and bobs. Again, we get that same kind of symbol here on the back. Slightly different symbol, actually. It looks more like the one from the chest, but uh, very cool. Again, that soft plastic here, so that might tear off pretty easily if you get snagged on something, but... It's cool that it moves around these little bits here also are very flexible very nice and then we get more of that cloth piece there with some interesting little uh, buckly things all the way down I don't know if we can get can't really tell what that is but that looks pretty cool though whatever it is and again I really like that fabric mesh feel and look to that so very very cool looking let's take a look at articulation here so the head does spin 360 degrees very nice there no limit on the articulation there uh, we've got a little bit of up and down movement there the space marines have uh, like a circular piece there that allows it to go up and down but this one looks like it's on a standard kind of peg system but you get some left and right movement, head tilt as well, down, up, very cool. The shoulder pauldrons here are not on that kind of articulated joint like we've seen with the Space Marines, but still looks like it's going to be fine. The shoulders have, actually, they have that weird, uh, so like from the Marvel Legends series, the extra swingy shoulder joints I guess uh, so you can move it around a little bit more it may actually be a secondary ball joint in there but 
It gives you a little bit more articulation there than standard. Uh, then on top of that, we do have the standard ball and swivel at that shoulder joint. So all the way out. Uh, that shoulder pauldron does limit going up more than that, back more than that, but you can't always kind of swivel it out and then turn it. So, yeah, not bad. Very cool looking. Uh, inside there, so about the mid bicep point, there is also a swivel joint in there, which allows the arm itself to swivel 360 degrees. And then we have, let's see here, uh, looks like a double elbow joint, which is a little weird, but it's there. This um, elbow pad thing here kind of makes it so you can't see what's going on in there, but there is a double joint in there. So you move that forward, and then it hinges again right there, so very cool looking. It's got kind of the clicky movement there, but still very nice. Uh, then at the wrist joint, we got a swivel and a rocker. Uh, it's one of those weird rocker joints where you kind of have to line it up the right way to get it to, to rock where you want it to, but not too bad. The fingers are fairly soft, so you can kind of move it, but they still got enough... Uh, rigidity to kind of stay in place there so you don't have to worry too much about them being all weak and weird and things like that. Chest has that kind of round ball joint that we're used to here so it goes all the way around and rocks forward about that much and back about that much so the ab crunch is a little weak on it but not too bad. Then if you hold down you can feel that that plastic underneath is again that rubbery bit so it's like a they've added the armor on top of the internal workings of the figure and I can't tell if there's a waist joint there or not I don't think there is so moving on down below uh, you can kind of shift this around to see underside of that and we have kind of the standard um, plastic T-hooks there at the hip joints. It's a little odd. Uh, they don't go out very far at all, about that much. But they do go forward very well. Backwards about that much. You can kind of shift it out and get it to go back even further. Uh, then on top of that we have no upper thigh articulation on it so it's just that one piece there but you can get it to move around uh, if we look real close in there I don't know how well this is going to show or not but uh, get this out of the way uh, it's kind of got that weird double ball kind of thing there so you can kind of ratchet it out a little bit to get it to work and to shift up with those hips and down so, a little odd, but not too bad there. Uh, moving on down, we do have a double knee joint. It's a little sticky here, but it's there. If we can get it to move around that, there we go. There's the double knee joint. So, very cool. Again, that soft kind of armor that's glued on top of things so that's really weird but it still works really nicely uh, no mid calf or upper boot articulation just a single bendy knee joint there then at the ankle we do have standard uh, twist there and it kind of rocks around wherever you need it to go there so it's, it's actually a swivel and then a rocker and then we also have uh, an articulation point there at the toe, so it uh, kind of pops up and down. Very, very cool looking. So yeah, this is uh, an interesting take on the female buck and the way that these uh, these joints are put together. Uh, the, the weird kind of 
extra plasticky, rubbery bits there for the armor. Uh, it's going to take some getting used to, but I'm not opposed to it. I do like the way it feels, and it looks really great. So, yeah, no big deal with that whatsoever. So, I don't know. So, the, the head sculpt looks pretty good. It's a little lacking in detail for me, uh, but that's more of a design choice than anything else. Um, the rest of the body looks great. Tons of detail in this thing. We've got cool little bits everywhere, so a very nice looking figure. The accessories here are just uh, wonderful. Can't really say anything bad about them. Uh, so yeah, this figure just works really well. I'm glad to have this particular character in the arsenal here in the lineup for the 4K, uh, sorry, the 40K Warhammer series. I think it'll work really well in uh, in scale with the rest of these. So um, now that I'm mentioning it scale-wise, here is the, the Hell Blaster from the same series, the same wave. And you can kind of see that it's uh, pretty comparable. It's still... It's not that clunky body style. It's the very kind of more slim lined. So you can definitely tell it's the female version, I guess. <clears throat> Again, there are aesthetic choices as far as that goes. There's no reason that somebody in this armor can't be a female or anything like that. But, uh, and likewise, you can put a scrawny guy in this battle suit as well. But, uh, Male versus female, this is kind of what they end up doing. Big clunky bodies for males and kind of slimmer, more petite versions for the female. So it is what it is. But it's still a really awesome figure here. So I'm looking forward to seeing more variations of these characters as we go forward. Uh, again, they do have the Artist Proof, which is the unpainted version of this, which, um, again, I don't have yet, but I'll, I'm going to try to get it hold get a hold of one and uh, do a review for y'all. But so far, this is a really awesome figure. It's just got just the right amount of detail to make everything pop. The colors look great. I'm about the only thing I would probably say is that it could use a little bit more of like a, a wash or something on the, the, the figure itself to make some of those details pop as it stands being that kind of flat black color. Uh, it's just missing a big opportunity to kind of see a lot of those details in there, unless you look really close. So, But still, it's an amazing figure. Very nice. Well done with this one. Well, that's all the time we've got for today, so thanks for watching as always. Uh, if you'd like to... I don't know what I was going to say there. <laughs> I lost my train of thought completely. But, that's alright. Uh, drop some comments down below. Let me know what you think of this uh, Adepta Sarita's Battle Sisters from the Warhammer 40,000 or 40k line from McFarland Toys. I'm really digging this thing, but I'm anxious to hear what your thoughts are on it. Uh, how does this compare to the, the Space Marine versions of the figures? Um, how does it compare across some of the rest of the lines? Um, mix and match kind of stuff, so yeah, whatever. If you'd like to see anything in future episodes, uh, drop me a comment down below as well. Let me know that. I'll try to get it out and get it in front of y'all. Um, yeah, if you haven't already, feel free to subscribe to the channel. Be on the lookout for more awesome videos coming down the pipeline. Uh, give us a thumbs up if you like what you're seeing. And uh, until next time.